Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. We have nighttime edition today. Dr. Weening, it's night. What are we doing here tonight? So this is the first episode of Wacky Wednesdays. Um, we have a patient who's a 93-year-old lady who had a long-standing hip replacement, and she uh, took a spill. Okay, so she fell with a, and had a hip replacement uh, present. So what happened? So you can imagine there's a bunch of things that can happen, but the reason that keeps us here at night usually is a broken femur. Okay, so a periprosthetic fracture. Let's go look at the x-ray. Sounds good. Okay, Dr. Weeding, here's an x-ray <clears throat> of a total hip replacement. Why don't you take us through it? So this lady that we're seeing tonight actually had an x-ray done about four months ago, and it shows that she has a hip replacement with an actually all-plastic acetabular liner that is cemented into her pelvis and then a metal stem that is cemented into her femur. It actually looks pretty good despite being almost 30 years old. All right, then she had a fall, and now it looks like this. Thanks, Canadian winter. So she slipped and fell and landed awkwardly. And unfortunately, when you have an implant in there, the bone sometimes doesn't have to do as much work, so it can become weaker. All right, so it looks like uh, to me that the femoral stem is now broken right out of the femur. Absolutely, and you can see just right here, that all bright white stuff, that's all cement that was holding that stem inside and now is broken. So what's our plan, Paul? Well, we're gonna have to take her to the operating room and revise that femur. It's uh, broken in such a way that we cannot salvage it. We're gonna revise that femoral component. So let's chat about periprosthetic fractures. Okay, so periprosthetic fracture, right? Fracture Fra around the implant. Yeah, and it's called a periprosthetic fracture because the first physician ever to describe it was Dr. Perry. Right? That's not true. That is not true at all. You just made that up. I did not. That's what I was taught. <laughs> that is totally Why wrong. Why is it called a periprosthetic fracture? Because peri is Latin for around. Okay. So it's around a prosthesis. So the fracture occurs around a prosthesis. It can happen anywhere. It can happen around a knee prosthesis, a shoulder prosthesis, or a hip prosthesis. It's a periprosthetic fracture. Yep. It's a very different fracture than a fracture that occurs without the presence of a prosthesis. Yeah, so every now and then you could treat them non-operatively and retain the implant. That's okay. Yeah, so it's a little crack, yeah. nothing's shifted or moved, the implant's still stable, you can treat that non-operatively. Maybe with a brace of some sort. Right, okay. Okay, so then what are, what are the other options? So let's say you're going to the operating room now, okay. surgical so options. We have a paraprosthetic fracture, we can't treat it non-operatively. We have to determine, is the implant stable or unstable? Yep. If the implant is stable, we can retain it and fix the fracture with like a metal plate and screws or wires or other type of hardware. Okay, now what if the implant is not stable? Unfortunately, if it's unstable, then you have to revise it and make it stable. So it's called a revision joint replacement depending on what location of the body you're in. Right, so we've changed from trying to fix the fracture alone to revising the component and fixing the fracture. And a lot of time that just means making an implant that goes past the fracture to stabilize it. Right, so we see the fracture, we determine, hey, is it, is it like a really stable fracture with a stable implant? We can treat that non-operatively. Yep. Or it's an unstable fracture, but the implant is stable. We can just fix the fracture. Or the implant is loose, not stable. The fracture is not stable. We have to revise it and fix the fracture. And there's one more thing we look at when we look at these periprosthetic fractures, and that's bone stock. Yes. And often as we get older and you, when you get these fractures, often the bone stock is not very good. And maybe that's why you fractured. Exactly right. Chicken and egg. So what if we have poor bone stock? Well, often we'll end up just replacing it with more metal, unfortunately. Right. Sometimes we're replacing all of the bone with metal, which is crazy, but right. we do it. So revision implants, more metal to replace the bone, or we'll use bone allograft. Yep. So bone from someone who's deceased and donated their bone, we can use some of that bone to build it up. Occasionally cement to fill some yep. of the defects. Or even bone graft substitutes we can use as well. Yeah. So what about this lady? This lady had an unstable fracture yep. and the implant was loose and her bone stock wasn't great. So we revised her with a longer stem prosthesis and we wrapped her remaining bone around that new prosthesis. Yeah, and thankfully her socket, even though it was plastic and 30 years old, actually looked pretty good, did not have any significant signs of wear, and was in a good position, so we felt it was safe to keep it. Right. So that's it, periprosthetic fracture, that's the approach. Unfortunately, these often get done in the evening, like it's the evening right now, but we have to come in at night and get this done yeah. because uh, the, these are the kind of fractures you want to treat as quickly as possible. So if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.